Hello, my people. Happy Monday and welcome to the stream. Boy, the weekend went by fast. It's another awesome Monday where I'll be streaming art. I'm Angela R. Sasser. I'm a fantasy artist, a writer, a mask maker. I do a lot of cool things that you can see more of at angelasasser.com. But today, I'll be working on the next in a series of birthstone and birth flower inspired sticker designs. Which you can see the sticker that I finished the last time I streamed here on the screen. This is Lady of August. She was the Lady of Peridots and Poppies. So this is how this one came out from the last stream. I'm pretty pleased with how that came out. So today we're moving on to Lady of September. We're hitting the fall ladies now and I gotta say I've been really looking forward to this one. She's one of my favorite of the main designs and the Jibby designs at the same time. She's just so fun and I love her themes of which I'll talk more about later. But before we dive into doing the color flats on this one, I have some plug-in to do. It's a busy, busy week because I have a Kickstarter coming up that's from the same Birthstone series. So this Kickstarter is going to have the pens from the Summer Goddesses that were in this Birthstone series. You've got the June Lady for Pearls and Roses, the July Lady for Rubies and Larkspur, the August Lady for Peridot and Poppies. So I have a page here where you can check them out and sign up to be notified when that Kickstarter goes live. And in return, you'll get a free coloring page of Lady of June here. She's not always free, but during this event, she is free. So you can only get that, however, if you sign up at this particular page. So I'm going to drop that in the chat for you guys. That's summergoddesses.angelicshades.com I should put that in both chats. I only put it in Twitch. So many places. There we go. So yeah, sign up at that link and you'll get the free page. I've also got a launch party happening on Facebook, which I'm also going to link in the chat. And what I'll be doing at the launch party, party the party, <laughs> going to New York on you right now. The uh, launch party is going to be going on from now till launch day this Friday. I can't believe it. It's so close. And what we'll be doing at this launch party is I'll be sharing more info about each goddess. There'll be a giveaway towards the end. And the day of the launch, I'll announce the giveaway winners and then stream myself live while I announce those winners and hit the launch button. This is going to be exciting. I'm nervous and excited. Hey, Aiden. It's always good to see you tuning in. Hope you're doing well. Let me drop this in the chat before I forget. So much plugging. All right, so that's all my plugging, I think. Oh, of course the ladies, the birthstone goddesses, have their own website, so you can go there. And there's already a little picture with the address, so I won't have to link that. But jimgoddesses.angelicshades.com. You can go there and learn more about Lady of September and read all of her mythology and see all the pictures that are actually scrolling at the bottom of the overlay right now, but there's a lot of works in progress shots. She even has a matching mask that you can look at here. And there's a lot to see at the website, so go check it out. It's a fun gallery to explore. It's got all of the art for these ladies in it. And it's, it's a fun thing to explore, so enjoy! So let's get to some art. I'm gonna copy and paste Lady of September so I have her up to color pick from. 
because today we're just going to lay in the flats and colorize the lines because each one starts off with this clean, starts off like this with this clean black line art and then I come in and colorize the inside and leave the outlines of the shapes as black. That helps bring that really lovely Art Nouveau subtlety to it. So let's get our reference up on one side. I can close out Lady of August since you guys saw how that one came out from last week. There's a video recording of that up on my YouTube as well. If, if any of all ever miss these chats, you can always hang out with my ghost over on YouTube. Since I have it auto record these sessions and auto upload them and all. So yeah, this is a busy weekend for us. We were just... We finally got to play D&D with friends and also Father's Day. Cooked some Italian food for my father and my brother who's also a dad. And they just, it's cute how much they love Italian food. Like they both have like, you know, they, they both are pretty content in what they have. So I'm like, what do I get you guys? I, I don't know. And so I, we were, me and my husband just went over there and cooked for them and they, because they're such Italian foodies. But I'm going to mute real fast while I drag my Cintiq into place. And it's a very startling noise. So one second while I mute. Okay, horrible noise is over. Let's get to coloring. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and combine all of these lines. Well, I'm gonna duplicate them first and then merge them. So they're a bit easier to work with. I'm not looking all over the place trying to select the line. That one, that way lies insanity. Yes, we had an exciting final confrontation and final campaign session for our D&D game. And that was a lot of fun. The adventures of my tiefling warlock have come to an end, but thankfully it did not end in death. Even our bard who fell in battle was able to be resurrected. And we all celebrated Anko's birthday because she ended up not getting possessed by her patron. So happy ending. We did have a final confrontation with a crazy demigoddess. But she was this villain that swooped in at the end, and I think, I think my husband, who was the DM, was trying to build her up as this hidden villain that had been operating while we were busy taking care of demons trying to possess my character. And then um, the bard rolled three critical rolls in a row to convince this final boss that, no, no, you really don't want to do this. You should just maybe, like... You, know, you should just maybe end yourself if you don't want to deal with the world as is. It was brutal. And you know what? It worked. This demigoddess was like, oh wow, everything is wrong. And she used the wish spell to undo everything bad that she had done. And that was the end of our campaign. It was... We were not expecting the bard to be able to do that, but our player has this bad habit of rolling like critical roles for every single social role, but just crap roles for any combat roles. That's how she ended up dead. <laughs> so I was it was kind of a crazy D&D session. And for those who don't play, I apologize. There's probably a lot of nerd talk that just happened. 
They have no idea what I'm talking about. So my tiefling warlock gal is going to retire with her ninja boyfriend. Well, not retire, but I guess retire from adventuring to instead go and pursue her culinary career, hunting down rare ingredients so she can become the world's best baker who bakes enchanted food. And I'm sure they settle out down at some point and have a family. I think that would actually be a fun adventure to play, like just hunting down food ingredients, but having them be in dangerous places. Like I'd play that video game. I play that campaign, but we're gonna move on from that campaign. So perhaps it will just be in the realm of fan fiction. Since I have a bad habit of writing fan fiction for my D and D characters, or just my tabletop characters in general, she doesn't have feet. I just realized that. Oh well. She's like Morticia. You just, you never know if Morticia Adams has feet. <laughs> like, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. It's magic. But, um, yeah, so that was, that was my weekend. I hope y'all had a good weekend and... A good time. Either way, thank you for tuning in with me today. It's always nice to have people hanging out. I forgot to say hi. Hi, Milvis Ray. Always good to see you in the chat. If you don't like this color change, I would undo. Undo. I'm just gonna leave it. <coughs> Curse you, Pollen. So I'm always excited when I get to draw this lady from different angles because her original picture over here really doesn't do justice to the fact that she has heterochromia. And just a real quick introduction to Lady of September here for those who aren't unfamiliar with the series. She is the Lady of September, of course, who... September was a really tricky month to design a goddess for because I could not think of anything in September. But then I learned about how in the cycle of the year there is a, a celebration called Mabon. I'm probably horribly mispronouncing it because it's Celtic. But it's a time in which during the autumnal equinox you examine your strengths and your weaknesses and the good and bad within yourself and you try to come to a balance. You, it's a time of self-reflection and improving yourself by recognizing your flaws. And I wanted, th that instantly caught my imagination and I wanted to reflect that theme of the equinox with her light and dark sides here. She's got the, the night side with the stars and the day side with the suns. You can see them fading into each other in the background window as well. So I see her as this arbiter of balance that she encouraged you to accept the worst and best parts of yourself and try to improve. So that's what she's all about and I think this is why she's my favorite or my second favorite lady because I'm a little biased towards November. But uh, the heterochromia she has means that she actually has one blue eye and one red eye, and the red eye is on her day side, which you can't see because she's facing away. So I get to actually put that in this one. And then there's another rendition of her. Let's 
in the header drawings I did for each lady here where you can see that heterochromia better and then her clothing is also split dark and light in this party color kind of design so and I love that I just this theme speaks to me so anyways back to work I actually toyed with the thought of having dark hair on one side and light hair on the other, but then it just, I just went with the neutral white because it ended up looking too weird having the dual hair colors as well. Just didn't quite work. But I think the white is a nice neutral to perhaps demarcate that she's a being of balance, a neutral being of balance. I don't know, that's like my bullshit art explanation for why she has all the white hair besides the fact it was just, it looked wrong. I can't believe we're already in the fall, ladies. We've gotten so far. These sticker designs are coming together. I wonder which ones have been your favorites so far. Feel free to let me know in the chat or if you have any questions while I'm working. Feel free to leave those in the chat as well. Gives me something to chat about while I'm here doing this for the next couple of hours most like. I've also worked in little moon shapes into her headdress here. I'm just a fan of celestial symbolism in general, so this motif really spoke to me. Yeah, that magpie lady's pretty popular. That's my husband's favorite, but he's also a little biased since he was born in July, so he thinks his lady is best lady. these other line layers away, shall we? Hide those so that way I can change this layer without it looking weird. Oh, and for those who are curious, I'm working in Photoshop CC with a Wacom Cintiq 21UX. It's an older model, but still an awesome model. If there are any audio problems or anything like that, please let me know. I'll try to do what I can on the fly. What's next? What's next? Let's do the lips. Again, I think this lady's a lot more natural. She doesn't have a lot of makeup like some of the other ones. Even though I went a little crazy there in the Summer Goddesses with, with the eyeshadow. They just needed eyeshadow. I think I was going for that like traditional Japanese theatrical makeup look with them. Because they were, they were very um, Asian inspired. The, July and August ladies. Where did I next? I was. I 
think I'll go ahead, go ahead and mask out the, the lines around the pupils as well since I'm doing that to have something a little more a little less harsh. These harsh outlines kind of drain the life out of the eyes. They're great for having color sheets but not for ooh, eyes are too dark. Oh, what did I have I done? I put on the wrong layer, that's what it is. Happens to the best of us. And the reason I even colored the eye whites instead of leaving them stark white is so that any kind of white highlighting I do is the most brightest thing on the screen. It helps those whites be much more intense if their things surrounding them are not as bright white as the rest of the, the image. And just to give you an idea of what I'm aiming for, let me pull August back up. They all have very soft work on the in the pupils. Another reason we have those lines in there is mainly for people who are going to color these as coloring pages. So let's see. She's going to have sapphire pupils since she is the lady of sapphires. Oh, and the sapphires. Oh gosh, I'm messing up the selection. The reason I also went for one blue eye, one red eye specifically, is that sapphires are known to come not only in blue, but also in red. And I thought that was so perfect. That just worked so well for this lady since the birthstone goddesses all have eyes that reflect their gemstones. Circle of Rainbow Sapphire. Well, you'll have to show me that that sounds really pretty. Is that like a multicolored sapphire or are you talking about having a group of sapphires? I must know what Circle of Rainbow Sapphire is. There's so much cool gemstone mythology about sapphires that I learned while I was working on this piece. Yes, put it in the Discord. I will see that once I'm done streaming. That sounds really cool. Of course, now I realize I've colorized, I'm going to colorize both eyes blue, but I'll just quickly shift the eye on her right to red. It's easy to do. Oh. Copy. Paste. for any excuse to do heter heterochromia in a character because it's just it's just so neat and interesting looking so if you look at some of the characters I have in my gallery there's a, there's at least one with the uh, eye color shift Hers is from an eye injury. But yeah, this doing the research for this lady made me want to go out and get a star sapphire because they, they're so pretty. I didn't realize they came with stars inside of them. 
think that is just gorgeous. And then happy serendipity that I found some morning glories that are this striking blue that have a star pattern on the inside of them too. So it was just this serendipitous moment that all of these symbols came together for this particular lady. That's next. Let's do this headpiece next. She is perhaps the most fabulously dressed and intricate of the ladies, I think, of the goddesses. two tones of gold going on in here or I meant to so probably like these bits are darker gold hmm. it's been a minute since I've looked at this picture here feels like just yesterday that I finished them, but some of them are getting, getting up there now that I've been working on the alternate images and getting together other merch for this brand. We'll call this headpiece one. And he's dark. Yeah, there we go. Logic. to get this before I forget. I think if I were to cosplay any of the ladies besides perhaps November I'd want to cosplay this one just so I could wear like a cool party color dress. And wear like a, a fun horned crescent moon headdress thing so I can be fabulous. Cosplayers hear my cry. Cosplay this one. I keep getting requests of people asking permission to cosplay, but I haven't seen anyone complete a cosplay yet. So if you're out there, cosplayers, I'm waiting for you. You have my blessing. There we go. Oh, better. Let's just mask out these pupil lines. 
G's gonna look like a soulless monster for a little while. Till we get some shading in there next stream. Yay, non-destructive methods. They are my favorite. All right. Oh, no. She's got some patriotic eyes. Red, white, and blue. Have, uh, have to have two different layers for her dress. That's always fun. I'll have a night side and a day side. How fun. That's why I've been looking forward to making this, to, to making this, to coloring this one for a while. All these fun dual elements. Plus she just has all these areas of flowy, pretty lines. No computer! Computer, let's stop. Darn. Okay guys, it's time for a sh very short stretch break. So I can keep happy and healthy from turning into a hunch monster. Since Lord knows being inside all the time drawing is already unhealthy enough for me. So feel free to stretch with me if you like. The soulless doll eyed model will walk you through it. Almost done, I think. This one is especially good. The fingers can get really tightened up from clenching the stylus when I draw and do fine movements, which can be really bad. That can cause a lot of different problems. So this one's very good to do. It's subtle, but it, it does wonders for you. Okay, we're not gonna take the rest of the break. I will take a walk after I finish the stream though. Okay, yay, back to coloring. I love this mermaid dress she has too. It's the coolest. Mermaid style dresses are just in general the, the most pretty elegant dresses. Oh, I forgot the bottom. I'll come back for that.
And I imagine the, these pleats in the center are like silvery and shiny and they're really ruffled. I had a cool dress that looked like kind of liquidy silver for the reference of this dress. It, it was it was the prettiest. Night side, day side. I was proud of myself for getting a kind of yellowish sunlight coming from the right side and then a, a moonlight blue reflected light coming from the left. Like, I think I'm especially proud of um, being able to pull off that dual lighting in this one. It just feels nice that I think um, probably like 95% of the time nothing ever comes out the way I want. But this one came close. Like, I'm not totally satisfied with the face, but she is one of the few that I would put up in the house. Because other times, whenever I, we try to display my art up in here, I'll just be like, blech. I don't like it. I need to fix this and this and this. Just makes me obsess over what I want to fix. I think this is one of the ones I can tolerate. She's in a really nice frame. Like, I don't know if I have a picture of that frame. Ooh. Probably in my Instagram somewhere. Eventually, I need to come back to the website and. Like. Uh, what was that end of this sentence? I need to come back to the website and share the the frames that they're in because I feel like that's half of the experience with a lot of these gals. Oh no, it's my face! Uh, let's see. No, no. Yes, here it is. I thought it was recent. Of course, that's a kind of hard to see. Darn. But it's got like this sort of starburst around the edge, which goes really well with her, um... Can I scroll over? Yes, I can, so... Oh, no, I can't. Darn. I thought I had a close-up. So the frame has these starbursts. Aha! Here we go! Yes! So you can see the kind of starburst centers around it, and it's kind of dusted gold and it's so pretty it's really something you have to see in real life too these f frames that i found oh shaky cam i fail film class y'all anyways okay back back to the picture back to the picture I think I will try to work in these stripes. I was just going to make them all the same color, but I'm going to work in the silvery pleats with different colors in here. Pleats. Light. Eh. Layer names are the hardest. This is why I usually never name them. I obsessed this long. Oops. Just trying to name characters. did. I always have to remember to expand. Did I expand it? See, it's so automatic now that I can't remember if I did or didn't. But I'll just do it anyway, just to make sure I've overlapped the outline enough. Because when you don't, sometimes you end up with little tiny white corners and things.
I think like this lady and July and the basically everything after no, everything after July basically in this series started getting really fantastical and they started moving further away from real world goddesses to being these more unique fan fantasy creations which is either a good thing or a bad thing I'm not sure it's nice for people to be able I to identify a goddess that they relate to with the real world goddesses but then it's kind of fun to be able to give them a story all their own and how they might function in my own sort of world. It's nice to be able to, to make up the whole entire story. Let's save. I've gotten far enough where I need to save. Hmm, I'm thinking I may mask out these really harsh highlights here in these gems too. For the same reason that I've masked out the uh, the lines of the eyes. It's just very harsh and takes away some of the subtlety here. The subtlety. There we go. Hmm. I wonder if I have this on its own layer here and all of these layers down here. Let's see. I don't know if this is all sketch layers. Jim Starline, do I have more? So many layers. Maybe I can select it and that'll pick out the layer for me. Oh no. Yes, I do have it. That's what we need. We need this, these star shapes. Yay, for not having to redraw things. And hello to anyone who may be tuning in from Facebook. I can't actually respond to you in the chat if you happen to leave me comments, but I'm happy to respond to you verbally, so anyone lurking from Facebook, feel free to speak up and I will respond to you here in the videos. So I'm nice like that. So we're just going to drop this above here. So then all I have to do is erase these highlights on I may even erase the whole star form after I've had a chance to use them as a guideline in the coloring phase. Hmm. So we'll we'll get to this step. We'll get to this step in a minute. I'm gonna come back to this. But I just wanted to get rid of these chunky highlights first. There we go. Yay, better. Merge that with this one. Is 
Where is the mask? Boom. So we're gonna do I'm gonna color them flat. I'm gonna color these gems flat for now. Flat sapphires. Sapphire. And then I can put the star in another layer. And I'm doing this just in case I decide to straighten up the star or change the shape a little. And then I won't have to worry there about there being any gaps between the color and the star, since they'll be independent. I suppose I could have used the lasso tool to select this, but I just manually colored it anyway because I am a glutton for punishment. Welcome to my stream, where I basically do everything the hard way. Sort of a leftover from being a traditional painter, I just kind of want to paint everything out instead of finagle it with digital stuff. Just so if you're watching for the most efficient Photoshop tips and tricks, uh, maybe not the right channel for you. But I draw the pretty thing, so maybe that's enough. Alright, let's see. I think I think her strip of suns here, her sun ribbon has the same dark light dynamic going on, so the center sun here is gonna be all the lighter gold while the rays are going to be darker to set off that centered sun. Oh, I keep clicking on you. Time to close you. Yay! Time for Magic Wand to be my best friend. Let's call this Sun Ribbon. Centers? Oof. The lines here are sloppy. I might have to come back and fix some of these little sloppy rays that no one else will probably notice in the final printed stickers but I know they're there and it will drive me nuts if I don't like close that gap and close this gap. Ugh. Gotta have some self-respect and close these gaps. to even say what I'm making these stickers for. These stickers were unlocked by my Patreon patrons a while ago since we hit a goal. We hit a goal, which now I can't remember what the exact goal was, but we hit a pretty nice monetary goal on Patreon. And I wanted to do something nice for my patrons in return, so I've been working on these stickers so I can give them to give them for free to my patrons as a 
Just a nice little thank you for helping me unlock that goal. But first I gotta actually finish this whole set. Which I've been doing in between other projects. Because they seem simple, but... Don't let these chibi faces deceive you. They are actually quite complex. Especially these autumn gals. I just went a little insane adding props and things to them. In fact, I probably shouldn't have even drawn all these sun rays in. Why did I draw all these sun rays in? It's a chibi. I should have just BS the circles and left the rest blank. But at this point, it is too much effort to erase these lines. But yeah, I have trouble simplifying my designs. The story of my life. Oh, select tool. Thank you for making my life better. Select tool, you are the best. I wonder how many times I've clicked. So many clicks. Yay, we're at the end. Ooh. Note to self, don't draw tiny, tiny detail in chibi pictures. Oh, and the, again, the, the pictures that y'all see scrolling by, I think up right now is a mask photo, or a couple of mask photos. Those were taken of the leather masks that I created for this series too, since I'm, I'm a leather crafter and I thought I'd test out my skills by making masks in the same theme as well. And those photos were taken by the wonderfully talented Winter Wolf Studios. We collaborated together so she could have some cool masks for her photography portfolio and I could have some cool mask photos that weren't taking on a terrifying uncanny valley mannequin because my mannequin scares people and I'm just not wanting to be the model in those photos. So thank Winter Wolf Studios for saving everyone from the terrifying Uncanny Valley mannequin and making some pretty gorgeous photos for us to enjoy, which will also be featured in the art book collection for this series once all is said and done and I'm finished, finished, finished. It's coming soon. Gotta get these enamel pins out and a few more paintings. Am I coming soon? Probably not till next year will this be wrapping up entirely since I've still got a wall calendar to finish up and I've been drawing extra graphics for that as well. I thought I was gonna be able to do that at the beginning of this year, but nope. <laughs> I once again got ambitious and wanted to actually have some cool stained glass, like take the stained glass models from behind each lady here and um, have those in the bottom part of the calendar. So like the top part would be this really pretty fine art painting and then the bottom parts will be the stained glass by themselves because it's such a shame to just have them not included when I've designed them all out. I just need to paint them up so they can be included in the calendars. 
so my work is never done. Then who knows what we'll do once the birdstone goddesses are all wrapped up. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> there are really so many choices. We'll just have to see what life is throwing at us then. Sapphire Stall. I like the name of that layer. Sapphire Stall. Which would be a beautiful name for a character. Or a My Little Pony or something. I think what I'll do is I'll just color these in. And then colorize the line around them too. Which that line is on a separate layer. lock in the transparency on this line art then I can just come in and do this oh and I can see all the gaps that I missed funny how that works There we go, that's better. Got all the gaps. I'm sure if I weren't so Adobe Illustrator illiterate, I could probably come in here and make this star and make it all straight and then just copy paste it onto the other parts of the design, but I am not that savvy. I wish I were, but somehow I ended up learning Microsoft Publisher in school instead of Adobe Illustrator. Don't, don't ask me why. That was my college. The Microsoft Publisher was the jam back then. <laughs> Even sure they make that program anymore. And then we're just gonna colorize and see where we messed up before. I wish some ninjas would bring me some tea. One day it will be true and they will come. It is afternoon tea time right now. I always like to take a moment in the day to pause and reflect. have some tea because a constant diet of tea just helps the art go around I like chai the best but I also drink a lot of matcha 
because it's it's worked so many wonders for my health. Helped me get some stress, anxiety, blood pressure down, which has been great. Because I don't generally have chronic blood pressure, but I do get anxiety that drives it up every now and again, and the tea has helped with that. And it just tastes good. Mmm, leaf juice. I needed something since I had to give up coffee for stomach reasons. Oh no, where'd the music go? So you guys still have music? Yes, music's still playing for you guys at least. Ooh, I want to go over to the Discord and see this rainbow stuff. See the rainbow sapphires, but I'm, I must be patient. I will look after I finish. actually really nice to be drawing something again. So these chibi ones, these chibi pictures have been all in. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, Nervous Ray. Yeah, I, I haven't had a lot of chance to draw lately because I've been doing a lot of graphic design type work for the Kickstarter. And if you have never run a Kickstarter before, there's just a lot of stuff you don't think about that goes into it. Like, I'll probably write about some of this in the secret sketchbook post for my patrons on Patreon. But like, you need graphics for ads, and then ads are all different sizes. Like, I'm gonna have, uh, have had ads on Facebook for this Kickstarter, and there are gonna be some ads on Instagram. But Facebook is landscape size, whereas Instagram is square shaped. Like the optimized pictures for it are square shaped. And then Pinterest prefers portrait shaped. So you have to have like three versions of any ad you'll ever do. And then, uh, then mock-ups. Gotta have mock-ups of, of your product that you're gonna have on the Kickstarter. And mock-ups of the reward tiers so people have a visual representation of what they're getting. Or at least I always like to do that because nobody reads. I mean, I don't even read. It's nice to have pictures that you can kind of instantly digest exactly what you're going to get. So I, I try to do that and make everything visual, but it just means there's a billion mock-ups that have to be made to make for any Kickstarter that I do. But the plus side is that I get to have a whole bunch of templates that should make the future Kickstarters in this series way easier to do. Yes, I approve. Oh, you know, I forgot her like horn flap over here. Her head flag. I don't, I don't know what you call this. Her half veil? Half train? 
I don't know what it is. Y'all come up with names. What would you call this fabric piece flying off of her headdress? Surely there's a better name than head flap or horn flap. but these little comedy and tragedy faces just make me giggle. They're just, they're just cute. Especially the sad one. It's like, oh no, it's, I'm sad, but I'm a chitty face. Yeah, headdress fail, I guess. That seems to be the only logical thing I can think of. Even though it's, it's not like covering her face. But I guess some bridal veils don't cover your face, but they're still called veils or whatever. Words. kind of itching to get back to some serious business paintings. I haven't had a good painting that I could sink my teeth into in a long time. Most of the stuff from May Sketch a Day was very rough. So I'm kind of itching to get into something, but I just haven't had the time. Time is my enemy. Oh boy, now I get to come back and, and do the night ribbon here with all the little moons. Ugh. Moon ribbon moons? <laughs> I guess we'll... I gotta decide where the new moons are and where the full moons are. Ugh. I think we'll make this the new moon. This will be the new moon, and then the next one over will be the full moon, so. I do this to myself, you guys. Wait. Oh no, the phases aren't in order. Wait. Whatever. No one will notice except for you guys. Because I said something about it. Full moon. This one to be a new moon. <laughs> what did I do? Yeah, I think I just kind of BS the order uh, after a while. No one will know. Enough. 
Oh, hey, so remember how I've been saying for how many streams now that I've been playing Dragon Age Inquisition? But guess what? I beat it this weekend. I beat it. Except now there's a whole other DLC for it. So there's like this entire epilogue mission where stuff happens and stuff and things. So now I've got to play through that if I want to get to the real ending. <laughs> I'm still I'm still loving it. <laughs> I'm still loving this game. And at least I'm in the DLC part. I'm just like Good lord. How how much art did the artists who work on that game have to make to fill out every biome you could ever think of from like ancient elvish forests to deserts to now in this latest DLC we're, we're adventuring in between the dimensions into these old hidden elvish ruins with like stonework and stuff and I'm like good lord oh hey Psyche it's good to see you you been lurking this whole time, or did you just pop in? But yeah, I'm kind of playing my Inquisitor, like, sort of... Sort of done with this shit, too. Like, she's like, I've been adventuring too long. I'm just gonna do what I need to do to save the world, and then retire in... In great wealth with my honey bowl. Which is what I'm calling her boyfriend because he's a big horned Kinari guy like her. She's she's like a horned lady too. He's my honey bull. <laughs> Don't let me distract you from your application. But I, I am flattered that I, I would uh get your attention away from that something important. Sad chubby face. Just want to pinch his cheeks. I should go ahead and just color the chibi face in while I'm here. Your dark as night. And hey, I'm just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just proud. I'm proud of myself for even finishing the game because I came out in 2014? It's been like five years, I think, since it came out. And I kept telling myself, oh, I'm gonna play that game. Because I love Dragon Age. The older games are just so great. This newer one is great too, but I think they just got too ambitious and they were just like, let's go insane and include everything ever. Because we can. And they didn't stop to think, their scientists didn't stop to think if they should. They were too busy concerned if they could. I messed up that quote, but you guys get the idea. And oh man, the last, um, the, the DLC has you exploring this gorgeous palace that's French in inspired. And the architecture is so pretty and full of gold. There's gilding everywhere and flowers and it's just so ornate and decadent and I'm just like, ah, oh, architecture porn. Game, you so pretty. I complain about there being too much game, but then I'm like, yes, let me continue to explore all of the pretty architecture, which is probably a reason I haven't finished playing Assassin's Creed Unity yet? Because I know that one's going to have a lot of s cool stuff to explore and I'm just like, please no. 
I'll never have a life again. There will be no escape if I start that one. I mean, I've started it and then I, I quit because I, every time I open the map, I get this overwhelming sense of existential dread of what I'm doing with what am I doing with my life because there's like a hundred missions on the map and I'm just like I can't I can't handle it I just got the, the open world fatigue big time So I've been thinking also with this series, we're, we're in the home stretch. This is, we've got the autumn, the autumn goddesses tibies to finish, and then winter. Change of August, October. Yeah, we're almost done. And that means either I'm gonna stop streaming for a while, I might take a short break from streaming while I figure out some other things, but if I'd really like to fill these streaming slots with something fun, like maybe I could just come on every now and again and brainstorm on D&D characters and draw them or do a random character generator and just practice drawing them or even do some of my own homework that I have for Proco and master copies and stuff like that. Like I could show you how I study. There's a lot of stuff I could do. Like there's fan art I want to do, but I never get a chance to do it. And maybe this could be a slot where I do it. But all of the above. I mean, like, what would you guys like to see me do on stream once these stickers are done? And feel free to give me some ideas. Oh, hey, Sonny. Belated hello. It's good to see you. But yeah, give me some thoughts on where you'd like to see this stream go. I can even rotate between some themes. Oh god, yeah, I haven't even finished the wardrobe designs for Kalara or any of my other characters, really. I could come back to that. That was a lot of fun. Even though I feel the pressure to make every design really stellar when I'm working on them live, I'm like, oh no, if it sucks, then everyone will hate me and unsubscribe. are so sloppy. Melvis Ray says that she's got to finish Origins on legit mode. <laughs> then AC Odyssey. Then Witcher 3. That's a really awesome game list you got there. AC or Assassin's Creed Odyssey is on my I, on my list as well. I'm totally excited for you to get into Witcher 3 because I think you're gonna dig a lot of the just a lot of the world building. It's super cool. But yeah, I'd I'd love to play Odyssey as well because the, all the mythology tie-ins seem like a lot of fun. All that Greek mythology all the cool places in the world to explore. <laughs> so we're getting some great suggestions. More outfit designs, of course. Character sketches, like the old, older streams I've done where I was working on ideas that I got some prompts for from my patrons. And then Psyche says, that 
coloring and chatting and drawing and stuff is cool, but also everyone should see me play Fatal Frame. Which, if you don't know Fatal Frame, it's this- it's one of my favorite video game series where you- basically the protagonist is always someone who has this camera that can see ghosts and also the camera can hurt ghosts. So you're in these haunted locations, there's usually some terrible ritual that's happened and it's your responsibility as the protagonist to figure out what happened in this evil ritual and how you can put the spirits at rest and all that stuff. It's it's a really good it's a really good atmospheric type of game series and there's a lot of Japanese folklore involved and like dark Shinto rituals and stuff. So the imagery is very much folk horror in the Japanese vein and I just freaking love it. It's it's imagery that I'd actually like to do a lot more fan art of myself. So, and I think Psyche can correct me if I'm wrong. She liked to watch me squeal and flail and run around because I have a horrible sense of direction and I would get lost in these games. Like, I would just run in circles and it was, it was sad and hilarious. So I'm like, oh my god, run away from the ghost, but also the scenery is really pretty. Oh my god, run. <laughs> Which is, is, to be fair, is pretty hilarious. I like watching my husband do the same thing when he plays Fatal Frame. Because he likes to pretend that he's not scared, so he's like, yeah, I'm the man. He has this, like, high-pitched squeal, and it's satisfying in some indescribable way. But you know what? I've been talking to Kev, and we're trying to figure out if I can somehow stream the Wii U or the Wii, because Fatal Frames 4 and 5 were both on those systems. And maybe we can stream them. And Fatal Frame 5 was the one I was talking about with the like suicide mountain and the water maidens. And then 4 is one that's about these haunted dancers that mysteriously fell dead one day. And you're trying to unravel the mystery of this island where this incident happened and there's an insane asylum and all this other stuff. I think it was an insane asylum. You know, I can't remember now. It was like, people who had this chronic sleeping illness were sent there too. Four was a bit of a strange beast. But it's it was still pretty awesome in that Fatal Frame fashion. And no one ever streams these games. I think they're just a little too niche. Besides, I can't recall having seen a Fatal Frame stream. Moon Ribbon, Light Moons? I'm running out of layer names. But failing being able to stream. Oh, excuse me trying to get a sneeze out to failing being able to stream Fatal Frame I've been thinking of streaming Tomb Raider because I've got that on my list I've got Thronebreaker which might be embarrassing to play because the the battle mechanics like card based and I'm not sure I'm that good of a card player so I would probably fail a lot before I actually win it might be frustrating to watch, so I'm trying to think what I could actually play and show people. But I love Tomb Raider games, and they're kind of fun to watch. Or maybe even like Telltale games where I can make decisions, and it's like watching a little movie. Or David Cage games like Detroit, Beyond Two Souls. They're cheesy and heavy-handed, but I, I kind of love them. 
They're like popcorn games for me. They're technically not good, but they're enjoyable and they're just, the graphics are just beautiful. And there should have been recorded evidence of when my favorite character died in Detroit Become Human because I literally was like, no, you're the only reason I play this game. And then the game trolled me hard afterwards. And it was, it was funny. My favorite character wasn't actually dead, but they pulled a really good narrative trick on me to make me think that it was, that that character was dead, so. Detroit was interesting that way. where I forgot a little sliver of moon right here. Yeah. Oh no! She, have you watched every time that she's played Detroit Become Human for you? There are a lot of twists and turns in that one. I've only gone through it once though. Actually no, I lied. I lost a ca another character I really liked at the end. So I said, no, no, no. Revisionist history. I went back and replayed it so I could save all the characters that I liked. of gaps I'm gonna have to fill the holes in here. Get you gaps off. But yeah, I, I will have to Oh, it's nice that she must have it on she must be just replaying like chapters for you which it's really nice that Detroit lets you replay just through certain branches that way you don't have to play like the whole story again if you only want to change one small thing here or there And I, I kind of love that game format because it's like, um, I used to love choose your own adventure books back when I was a kid. So this is like choose your own adventure books for me now that I'm an adult. So those games are like my guilty popcorn pleasure. I feel like Detroit you might actually really like uh, Beyond Two Souls as well. Same super cheesy kind of game. But enjoyable. And by ACO, do you mean Origins or Odyssey? Since they both have uh, they both have an O in the title, but I bet you mean Odyssey since that's the newer one.
Okay, that, that doesn't look as terrible as I thought it would once I colored it in. Hooray, not terrible! So all the main figure is, is laid in. <sighs> now to figure out breast. Origins was super pretty though. If you ever get a chance to watch that one. I really love the visuals of Assassin's Creed Origins. Of course, I'm kind of an Egypt nut. So... A little bias. A little bias. I kind of lost myself in that game because I would run around like a dorky tourist just photographing the clothing detail on people and squirreling it away into my screenshot library to use as reference later. There's so much to see. They even got so detailed that they made an educational mode. So there's an educational mode in Origins where you can learn about ancient Egypt and it walks you through these interactive tours of Egypt with like an in-game model and it's it's so cool did I forget it I did forget a piece of gown right here I don't even know how I did that color the background uh, maybe maybe light blue on the inside and light yellow on the outside let's try it and see what happens to use the hue slider here to like play with these colors and see what I want to do. But first let's go ahead and just put like a temporary color in this outer ring. Oh I forgot something. just gonna put a gold in here for now uh, like maybe this pale pale gold stare at it for a minute hmm it's a little too I don't like it Just kind of using the Q slider to see if any color combinations pop up that I like. It's 
nothing is really spinning my wheels. Maybe something that's just like a the same neutral blue. but just a little darker. I think why that works in the original painting is because this background blue is kind of neutral gray. So that gold ring was sort of... distracting too much. And then I can make the outside uh, like it was a gold frame and some the same colors of her headpiece, perhaps. So let's try the hue slider again now that we have this in gray and see what happens. I think I just I don't want two different colors vying for our attention here since she's already got two different colors happening. So it's better just to have the background be in the same color family. Warm gray doesn't look half bad as opposed to this cold gray. Yeah, let's go with the warm gray. It's, it's pulling up the warm tones it's plucking out the warm tones in this night mask. But not fighting with the tones of the other two colors, so. We'll stick with this, yeah. Ah, fine. I was gonna try and fill the layers, but the computer wants me to take a break, so I guess I'll take a break. Has it already been another hour, you guys? Holy crap. Time flies when you're coloring. Have this thing set to poke me every hour because otherwise I will just sit here and color and then be like why does my neck hurt could it be that I've been in one place holding it at an odd angle for an hour or four <laughs> coloring Okay, back to coloring. Rawr. All right, let me fix this dress gap. <laughs> it's funny the the way the colors are in this. Her red eye stands out so much, but that's what I get because I wanted weird character design quirks.
She's so cute. Oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited to see this one finish. Since she's, again, one of my favorite, one of my favorite, favorite ones. You know, her headpiece here is different on this side. It's like there's an extra ribbon gap thing here, but there's not on this side. Let's fix that, shall we? Apparently, I was just done with this shit when I drew that. Which sometimes happens. I figure out what exactly I'm gonna do with the stream after I finish these gym gals, these little gym goddesses. I will I will post a schedule and let everybody know when I'll be working on things, what I'll be doing. I am thinking right now it'd be kind of fun to alternate between studying, free drawing, or maybe have like character request sessions or not character request sessions but like if I want to draw a character I'll maybe pull my patrons and they can tell me what character they want to see drawn stuff like that So we shall see, I'll definitely be back to streaming after I finish the little gems. I'm not sure exactly if I'll do anything where people are requesting original characters because I don't want people to expect a masterpiece during a stream. So if it comes out in a way that someone doesn't like, then, you know, then people are disappointed and, and I'm embarrassed. So I'll probably just stick to like either my own OCs or characters from fandoms that I've been wanting to draw. Plus, then I wouldn't need to have to go about asking for references or anything like that. Which, then it starts becoming- it starts taking too much time for something I'd rather do spontaneously. So whatever I end up doing, it'll probably be quicker and more spontaneous. Or something easy like studying. Like I said, probably gonna end up doing a mixture of all of the above. So I just gotta figure out when I'll be doing things. I'm also at the end of this project here, gonna see what time slots have worked best, what time slots were the most attended, which so far Monday seem to be winning. Y'all really seem to like Mondays, which is cool. Wednesdays aren't very well attended right now, which is a surprise for me because I figured that's when all my East Coast people would tune in. But Wednesdays have been a little quiet and they're the hardest for me because it, it means that my day is kind of split up 
between w working when I can during the day and then taking a break and then hopping on to work for a few more hours at night. So it's like, and also rushing dinner so I can make sure that I get on in the evening. So Wednesday might end up being dropped out of the schedule. But we'll see if it becomes more popular all of a sudden by the time I'm done with all of these little gym gals, then maybe it'll stay. So another thing I always wanted to do with a stream is to draw from the Reckless deck, which is a project I kickstarted, uh, it might have been a couple of years now, but it's this deck of cards that's for concept artists where you can draw different descriptions. So it'll be stuff like, uh, you can draw cards that say it's a character with a, a whip and a crown made of stars who has drill for legs or something. <laughs> it's, it's very random. It's basically like a card deck that generates ideas for characters and there's even like a booster pack with environment art so I could draw some really random ideas for environments and end up testing my skills by drawing them which I really need environment practice, so that might actually be really, really helpful for me to study and also give you guys something interesting to watch. Because you never know what you're going to get. But yeah, I, I kind of envy those folks who can draw on demand. Especially at conventions and stuff. I'm much more of a methodical... A very methodical, slow person, so... Drawing on demand is kind of terrifying to me. And streaming's already kind of nerve-wracking, in a way. That's why I like to do easy stuff like this, because, like... This, I'm just either tracing lines, like I had my sketches done already last time I streamed these. And then all I was doing after that was just like, you know, outlining them, or now I'm just filling in colors and shading them. It's harder when you're doing the idea, idea generation live, because then there's the pressure of, well, what if this idea gets scrapped, then you guys will have wasted your time watching it. Or at least that's the thought process that goes through my head as an artist. I value your time and I don't want you to waste your time here watching me. So that also could be just the way that artists think that we aren't worth enough if we're not doing everything perfectly. So I definitely have a problem with per perfectionism. Okay, color picker. Strawberries. Strawberries for no. Okay, I'm trying to color that color. Oh no, is it raining? Okay, what the heck. I know there's a way to choose a color. The all layers would choose with the adjustment applied. But maybe not. So what we're gonna do Uh, 
sense. There we go. Boom, now the layers are changed. Just had to merge them. haven't even gotten to the part where I'm colorizing the lines yet. Whew. But we knew these autumn gals would be something else. We knew they'd be demanding. Milpas Ray says she tends to think of streams as draw-ins, like we're all here to share a company, not necessarily to be entertained. That makes sense. Like, she enjoys watching me draw, but it's never the finished thing that is the object for watching. It's the process. And the process definitely includes scraps, and that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that, because I feel like... I feel like almost everyone drops in here like wanting to see how Photoshop is done and somehow learn from the stream, but it's definitely... It, it's good to know that people aren't necessarily here for a masterclass. Because <laughs> I'm definitely not a masterclass. So it's good to know... It's good to know that people just are here for fun and hanging out. Because I think that's what I prefer to treat streams as personally. Because it's a lot of pressure to think, oh no, I have to do this right. That's what's kept me off streaming for a, a long time. I'm definitely not surprised to hear that an artist's perception of what people are here to do might be a little skewed because I think artists definitely have this whole fear of, of what their art is worth to people and making, especially for you guys when you're patrons of mine, that I just want to make sure you're always getting good worth out of your pledges to me and what you know what you get from me. That's just my own sense of um, perfectionism and integrity playing up there. Oh, there's another gap. I'll come back to you, gap. can't wait to color these flowers in. They're such a pretty blue.
I do really want some free draw time too. And one thing I do like about streaming is that it really makes me focus. It, I, I can't go to Facebook. I can't get involved in any group discussions or anything like that. I just, I have to stream because it would be, you know, it'd be really weird to like surf Facebook while I'm streaming. So it cuts out a lot of distractions, which is, is nice. So having some time where I could actually free draw, I'm focused on, on drawing. And maybe I give some of my characters more time because I get so caught up in my birthstone goddesses that I don't give my characters any love. Like all my D&D characters and novel characters. And Song of Exile, <laughs> which I've been needing to give more time to, always. Be nice to get to doing some of my own stuff too. Because I'm selfish like that. Oh, I've already got a solution for including the ladies in Song of Exile. They're going to be, well, for, for starters, there's like, um, there are different sections of the continent and characters in the story are from all over, so they don't all have the same country or religion. So my Monster Hunter character, Malakim, She's from more of a rural, forested area, so I'm thinking that in her neck of the woods that they worship the seven goddesses of the year, like the cycle of the year is, is determined or controlled by seven maidens. And, you know, each one is an aspect that ushers in the season. I think they translate really well into, like, folk goddesses that's something I've actually been thinking about for a long time now ever since this project started veering more into a fantastical direction and they've started gaining different aspects and stories that were less um, related to real world goddesses they started becoming something I started playing with in my own headcanon as it were I'm sure they'll probably end up looking different in my world, too. So, more things I could possibly draw on stream. The choices are endless, really. I like them darker or lighter. Ooh, too bright, too bright. There we go, that's a nice tone. I think that mid tone will shade that really nicely with the next layer of color that's going to come in when I shade it. She has some interesting lighting effects going on in this one that makes it a little harder to color pick from than some of the other ones. You get this gap before I just totally forget about it. Stop. 
Morning glories are so pretty. We have them a lot down here in Georgia. And they do only bloom in the mornings or in shade. They don't like the sun. And I'm always so pretty when this super beautiful bright flower blooms here in the wild. Like we don't cultivate them and uh, they just kind of find their way here. And they have little yellow in insides to them. keeps hitting the side of the stylus or my finger rather so then it brings up that mini when I'm trying to color just whenever you see that mini pop up for no reason it's my hand hitting the the button by accident get you guys at least in on choosing what kind of what characters I end up drawing like through polls and stuff like that so maybe we can help me pick some good ones at some point but first let me finish up this series still what do we got left October November and December be nice actually to get back to some training as well because I've kind of let my skills languish while I've been busy let's just doing the art business side of things and all these launches and stuff haven't been able to sit and really practice my anatomy as much as I want to it's from like one deadline to the next instead of actually taking the time to practice and the human human body is so complicated that it's hard to just remember how to draw it even when you you know how to draw it you start relying on shortcuts your brain starts taking the easy way out and then you've been using the same bad habit to draw an element of anatomy like I always end up with the same kind of proportional issues like big hands and lanky people who are kind of skinny and stiff. I, th I blame anime and comic books for that. Those are my big influences when I was laying the groundwork of what my people look like. So I definitely want to study. I want to study more. I want to get back to my Proko lessons. He's got some really great ones on anatomy. Let's see, I think I'm going to use the same gold from her headpiece in the background, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. oh, I 
can't type with my Cintiq glove on. Gotta do this frame. Then we have to colorize the lines. We haven't even done that yet. Oh no. You thought you were almost done. Ha ha ha. An artist's work is never done. Never. And randomly some other things I'd like to draw besides original character stuff I've got a whole list of things I'd like to make for my portfolio so hey maybe you could start seeing some of my art on things that I love like magic the gathering cards or on comic book covers because I'm a I love comic books I'm not so much into superhero comics, but like weird indie comics. And you know, those are those are some life goals I have and they're not gonna happen if I don't take the time to study. <coughs> Excuse me. If I don't take the time to study and also put that time into making very targeted portfolio pieces. So while my personal stuff is cool, it's generally not getting me any work in either RPG books or Magic the Gathering or comic book covers. It's, it's, it's very much its own decorative art thing that does not relate to the market that I'd like to start doing more art for. So that is, that's something else that I've been thinking of doing with my streaming time. <laughs> like I said, there's, there's so many choices. Yes, the Kushio piece that I did in the past and my other piece, the Lotus Dancer, I think those are much more along the lines of what's going to get me hired for the kind of things that I like to be doing. So that one's a good example. So like, I'm just, my brain's going a thousand miles per minute thinking, well, what could I do? What could I do with my streaming time? There's so many choices. Ah. Yeah, Rama with the dagger, a, a piece of mine that's called Oathbound. That's definitely one that's in my book cover portfolio. And I think, honestly, drawing more of his world and maybe putting it in a Magic the Gathering kind of format. Sort of absorbing that style into my own world building pieces would actually be good for my portfolio as well. So... Pretty soon you won't be seeing as many birthstone goddesses pieces once I wrap up the art book in early 2020, fingers crossed. Or even just on my own time between 
things that I'm doing for this little IP of mine. But you know what? These gals are mine. They don't belong to anyone. They are mine, mine, mine. And I own all the copyrights. And I can do with this series what I will. So that's, that's the nice thing about having worked on this own IP thing too. Even if they're not quite what others are looking for in their own IP. So that's the whole reason I wanted to do this. Because it belongs to me. And that's important too, I think. So, there's lots, lots that will happen. I have many, many plans. But thank you, Melvis Ray. I'm so happy to hear that you enjoyed those pieces. Because I think a lot of, a lot of what I really, really love to paint was in them. And I, I need to do more of that work. Not that I, I don't love what I am doing right now, but it's just a different style. And I've kind of switched between styles because that's the nature of who I am. I love learning. I love experimenting. And these gals have been one long experiment. So of course now I'm like, whoop, flip. Flip the channel, I'm gonna go work in, like, dark, surreal, painterly stuff now. So my brain is constantly flipping channels on, on, uh, the stuff that I like to paint. I, I think, um, I think in the industry we call it imaginative realism that sort of painterly but fantastical subject matter that's very it's realistic but it's not extreme photorealism so I'm thinking of like James Gurney he actually coined this imaginative realism James Gurney did di Dinotopia with the dinosaurs living with our society so there's like firemen brontosauruses and all this cool stuff. If, if you've not seen it, it's it's delightful. But he makes it all look... It all works together. Because it's like painterly realism. But it's kind of vaguely stylized at the same time. That's the kind of stuff that I, I try to shoot for as well in my serious business fantasy. His book is on... Imaginative realism. I think it's called Imaginative realism. <laughs> it's really inspiring. I definitely recommend that to everyone I might have to link that in the, the discord for you later Milvis Ray I'm just gonna start calling you Ray because it's easier. <laughs> Even though I know your secret identity. <laughs> I never know if when people are sharing in here with their screen names, if they, you know, they're using their screen name because they don't exactly want to use their real name for whatever reason, which is totally cool with me. But Ray sounds cool to me, so I'll just say Ray. Although it's funny, you mentioned uh, Sam, my friend Sam, Hog. I just call you other Sam because I met I met Sam Hogg first. <laughs> we've we've known each other for years and, and then when I met you you became other Sam. 
Which I mean lovingly, not like other mother from Coraline. I call my mother-in-law other mother too. <laughs> She's possibly a little bit evil, but mostly lovable. And I mean that in the most loving way. <laughs> she knows she's evil. Did I forget her bun? No, I colored the bun. Okay. For a minute, I thought I didn't call her the bun. Whew, we can make it. We're almost there. That afternoon tea will taste sweet. Sweet, sweet tea. Exalted Sam. I kind of like the uh, the, majest the majestic title of Exalted Sam. But you're also a cool Sam. You're both cool Sams. So I'm not gonna call you less cool Sam because you're also cool. Or like far cooler Sam. <laughs> you're both cool, so. Well, it bothers me that this star is off center. It would probably take a long, more longer time to fix it than. <laughs> no, I should leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna do my best to leave that star alone because it would take too long to fix it. Oops. Got a lot of transparencies. So it kind of looks cool with just the outline of the star. That's kind of neat. <clears throat> Oh good, I can just say that my star sapphire is au natural. If they're if they're in nature not very centered. Let's go with that. I really need to see a, a big one in real life. 
Psyking showed me a small one when I hung out with her last, and it was so pretty. We really gotta make it out to some gem shows and see all these like cool stones that are out there, because there are just so many variations that I've never seen. And then I'll want to touch all the stones, which is what I do every time I go to a gem show. Just go stick my hands in the bins. That just feels good. I can't explain why it's comforting, but it is. I don't know if that's like an ASMR, but physical? <laughs> Maybe it is goblin magpie brain. I have to be careful though, because then I don't want to buy all the stones. Or just buy a random expensive piece of labradorite because it's pretty and then do absolutely jack shit with it. Just hoard it in a pretty pile with the feathers that I collect. Oh no, I left some feathers at a friend's this weekend. Boo! I have to get them from them the next time I go over there. They have a bird feeder that has bird wars every time I go over there. There's like gangs of doves just like beating up on the other on all the other birds. It's it's pretty amusing to watch. It's like the cardinal gangs and the dove gangs. And then you got the squirrels who are just really adept. Who are trying to rob the, everybody but they're too big and unwieldy so they end up like falling off or fighting with each other because they don't have teamwork the dubs are totally the good feathers from animaniacs But yeah, my friends found some woodpecker feathers. And I forgot to take those, but hopefully they're not illegal to have, but I can't quite remember. So I would never keep illegal feathers, you guys. Never. You know, I'm not clear on the law. I probably should look that up just because I don't want my feather hoarding to ever come back to bite me. I tend to just pick the ones off the ground because we've got a lot of blue jays and cardinals that just live around here. So they leave feathers on the ground. Yeah, I know for sure raptor feathers are. The same blue. I guess it is. For some reason, the border blue looks darker than the sapphire blue I used on the headpiece. It's weird. And I'm gonna lighten it up because this is a mid tone. So I, I need it to be not as dark as the shadow that's going to eventually be applied, so let's change these sapphire colors. There we go, that's better. Woo, all the color flats are in, but now we got to do the lines. 
Yeah, and I think we, uh, for Native Americans, it's for religious re reasons that they are allowed to keep them. It's an interesting law that's kind of a holdover from back in the day. Alright, time to colorize some lines. Woo! We can do it. <coughs> <coughs> My old roomie would probably know. She worked in a, a, a raptor rehab center. So I should probably ask her. More tea is needed. But I'm going to have to do the rest of this without more tea. So now we're just going to colorize the inner lines for that nice subtle visual interest and Art Nouveau variation. Oh, that's cool. That seems like a really neat place to volunteer at. Wow, macaw feathers would be awesome. I've seen some really beautiful angel wings that someone made. She was a, a prop maker doing big mechanized angel wings. And I want to say she made one with macaw feathers because they were so gorgeous. reminds me of the the pirate show we went to on vacation they had a bird handler bring out um parrots they just flew them over the audience and they were just flashes of color in the sky or in the auditorium and it was so pretty they are very beautiful and very loud birds. I think I might make this brown that I'm using for the line darker because right now any shadow that I might use to make the high contrast that I need for the gold is going to get lost. So let's select this and make it darker. Darkness.
always tricky to try to get this color can't quite be black because I need the black outline to be the darkest but then if it's not dark enough it just looks weird Oh, so random. A thing that I got randomly excited about. The Frozen 2 trailers are actually looking kind of interesting. In the latest trailer, there's this part where she's looking at... She dives in the ocean and then this really cool horse made of water appears to her in, in the water. And it, it's just so... Such a magical, surreal moment where she's underwater looking at this crystalline horse. And I'm like, damn, that's gorgeous. And it seems like a, a more serious story. Which, even if it weren't, I'd still want to see it. Just because I'm a fan of Disney as much as I try to hide it. Let's, let's face it, I don't try to hide it anymore. I'm not a bash Disney fan. I keep hoping maybe they'll find a fire elemental and it'll be like a like a battle between an ice elemental and a fire elemental. Maybe the fire elemental isn't evil. I don't know what's happening in that trailer, but I'm intrigued. It was a good trailer, I think, because it, it was a, some really intriguing imagery and then they didn't try to spoil too much either. So it left enough for fans to theorize about, which is the perfect kind of trailer. Burpee hiccups. I think I want the gray of her hair to be darker.
But yeah, the fact that I already kind of want to draw fan art of that crystal and horse thing is a good sign. And that first trailer where she was running at the ocean trying to see how far she could go in it was pretty cool too. The color palette in that trailer was really dark and I loved it. The animation quality seems way better too. It always impresses me how much they how far they get with each movie that they make. Then technology advances just a little more and then they can push certain effects even more. So other cool thing I saw was the, I finally saw the Ubisoft, uh, they put out some video of their new game Watch Dogs Legion, and if you don't know that's the Watch Dogs series, it's the series where you play hackers doing stuff. <laughs> To be honest, I only ever played maybe like five seconds of the first Watch Dogs game, even though it's been sitting in my backlog for years now. But the new one looked pretty interesting because it's, it's different characters that you can play. You're like recruiting all these different hackers, and some of the hackers were old older people. Like there's this older lady who's an ex-spy and her whole thing is that you know she kind of hobbles around and she's very unassuming you wouldn't think she's gonna like pop out a drone that's then gonna face hug you and shock you into unconsciousness <laughs> so I'm, I'm in it for hacker assassin old ladies that is just like the coolest thing I've seen in a game in a while and the game will also take place in London that's pretty cool. London seems like a very interesting setting to have a game like that right now. Plus lots of cool different uh, places in London to feature. Since they always have really grandiose set pieces in Ubisoft games. Plus, I'd like to see how the assassins feature into it now that uh, uh, the, the characters from Assassin's Creed are canon to Watch Dogs now. Spoiler alert, I guess. They kind of made that official in Assassin's Creed Origins. Which I've been theorizing for a long time that they were in the same universe. So I'm not surprised at all. see what were some other fun characters one of the hackers was like a an MMA fighter chick but we'll see how the game ends up because they they've over promised with watchdogs before but maybe they've learned their lesson this time we shall see
Ooh, her clothing's kind of tricksy. Because I'm like, where do I put the outline? I don't know. I guess it goes here. If you're, if you're still tuned in. How did your commission drive go for your friend with the, uh, the elbow injury? And feel free to plug that in the chat if you like. It's always good to help out other creatives when you can. Hopefully we'll get the care he needs. I know physical therapy is not cheap. No, oh. <laughs> I can't believe it's already been another hour. That is the magic of September. Oh, cool. Please do link in the chat. Maybe it'll, it'll get you a few more bites on the commission slots. Ray does really awesome fantasy art and character art. You should guys should check it out. And if you're into Exalted, very cool Exalted art and writing. And in this case, the commission slots will also help out another creative professional who's dealing with some injuries right now. Oh my gosh, it's almost five. Back to it, we're almost there. Let's say we're maybe halfway done now with colorizing the lines. Ray has put that link in the chat for commissions if anyone wants to grab a cool commission and help someone out at the same time.
whoops, this should be black. Another full body slot would be cool. You are alarmingly fast at your commissions. But it's probably just because I'm I'm alarmingly alarmingly slow. Trust me, you are fast from what I've, uh, what I've seen you do. But again, my, um, my sense may be a little skewed because I just, I, I'm so methodical. I do a lot, like way too much research and I'm still trying to tighten up my work habits and workflow and all that stuff to where I turn things out a little faster. Although I swear the internet gives us a, a skewed feel of what people's work pace is to These people are always producing stuff. And then I think people, uh, they bandy the, the term speed pain out a lot too. <laughs> like, yeah, I painted this in 30 minutes. Speed paint. I'm only just slightly resentful. Just, just slightly. But to quote Baymax, I am not fast. <laughs> Forgot the very tail end of the ribbon there, but I'll get to it. <sighs> I can do this without tea.
Okay. Oops, forgot about this. Darn. Uh, we should have just cut out the stars so I could just not have to worry about colorizing the lines of the stars, but mm, too lazy to do that right now. Okay, guys. We got this. We got this. I'm just gonna keep saying we're almost there until we're there. I'm gonna fake it till we make it. So I am totally losing steam. The tea is gone. Don't defeat me, Chibi. Wait, is that the right color? It looks too blue. Ah. All right, hold up. Hold up a minute. Oh, did I already mention hydrated Ganon here? If not, just random funny things on the internet. Zelda fans are so thirsty for Ganon, they've been drawing hydrated Ganon from the brief glimpse of his money that you, his money, wow, <laughs> his mummy that has been shown in the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. Drawing him in like all the body jewelry the mummy had on and stuff. Fandom is great. <laughs> the, the, the internet has dubbed him hydrated again. And there's actually some pretty cool art. I have to. <laughs> is it Wicker Man? It's, what's Wicker Man canon? Now I'm, now I'm intrigued. But yeah, there's some thirsty, thirsty artists out there. But I'm, I'm not not enjoying the fruit of the fandom's labors. This has to be the most amusing thing I've seen since, uh, what was it, Bowsette? And what, was there a ghost? There was some kind of ghost one too. I forget what that one was called. But some of the, just Nintendo fans, y'all. It's great. I love it. I think instead of focusing on the creepiness of the mummy itself, their imaginations are filling in um, what he probably looked like before he got all mummified. Because the mummy is dressed in some cool ceremonial gear, to be fair. Not that I would look at that and imagine what he was wearing when he wasn't a mummy. 
or anything. Yeah, it's not about the mummy itself being sexy. It's the the uh, the not dead mummy with cool ceremonial gear who is not dead being sexy. Fandom is a hard thing to describe. All right. <laughs> I kind of get it because uh, he's not. Apparently, I am not a Zelda expert. My husband is the Zelda fan, and he's kind of- so I'm learning this third party from him that Ganon actually wasn't always the bad guy. He's more of like a tragic hero type. And that's kind of appealing. And that's pretty cool, If especially if in Breath of the Wild 2, maybe they're going to wake him up because he was a failed hero that got corrupted by the Dark Force and now they're resurrecting him and he's gonna come fight with them? That would be pretty cool. And if he's like some dark tragic hero with lots of muscles and cool body jewelry, I, you know, I might, I might be able to dig that. Yeah, Tomo has a lot of, of art around. I've seen some very cool, like, AU stuff around that's got me intrigued. I actually, just to be transparent with everyone, I only came in at Breath of the Wild, and I just kind of watched Kevin, aka the husband, play it. And then had him fill me in on the history of, of Zelda from there. Since I only ever played Zelda 2 back on the Nintendo, and it was so hard that I just said never again, and never really wanted to play a Zelda game after that. <laughs> you can learn a lot from gifts on Tumblr. We're almost there. Maybe. I'm just gonna keep telling myself we're almost there. So I'm gonna be finished before 5.30, damn it. Now I'm motivated by hunger. I'm a hangry picture, so you gotta get done soon. says that she should go to bed but she wants to write yes I know how that is that's pretty much every night for me my brain is always like oh what about this epic story that you've been wanting to write forever but you know you never do it and I'm like brain I'm lazy I'm in bed I want to sleep let me alone You're almost done. Awesome. I have lots to read, and I know you're almost on. Is this your last chapter? Do you have more chapters after this? 
I know you were very close to the end. Third to last. Ooh, that's still very close. I'm so excited for you. Well, that must be a great feeling. What are you gonna do when you're done? Are you gonna party? You can have like a finish finish my story party. When I say party, like the thing I did last time I ever finished a thing was like go play video games and eat a meal somewhere. That's kind of how I celebrate. That's a party to me. Yeah, we ate some food, played video games. <laughs> I'm such a party animal. Congratulations, you're almost there. You got it. You can do it. All the encouragements. Yeah, I get the restlessness. Like, I, I still feel that way when I'm like, I'm not working on anything for the ladies. Why? What am I doing? I'm, I'm not... There's always something to be done for this series. There is no stopping. So when I finished the first set of pictures, I was like, huh? And then of course I filled the gap with like a billion more ideas. So that's what I do to myself. Okay, what has not been colorized? What do we got? I have to colorize the line in the background. And the flowers, and then we are actually done with color flying. <laughs> Oops. Oh my god, karma flying. I may complain a little about this stage, especially when it takes this long. But I know it's totally worth it in the end. It makes the final product that much more special and pretty to look at. Oh, speaking of, of um streaming things since we were talking about writing I was reading on some random patreon thing that there's this writer that streams themselves as they write and I'm like that's that's a thing people would watch because I know what I do is um it's usually spurts of writing and then a lot of replacing the same word with a better word before I move on and then a lot of staring at the page for maybe like 10 minutes at a time. <laughs> and then I would just be like, what? I would be anxious about people reading along and being like, why aren't they choosing better words for what they're, they're writing? I'm just intrigued by this as a thing that people will watch. It has me wanting to try it sometime, but then I would die of anxiety the same way I do with art, so... But I am intrigued nonetheless. I gotta watch someone stream when they're writing and like see what people are getting out of it. Cause it's something I've considered for maybe like if I ever do a writing themed par Patreon. Ugh. 
watch me obsess over word choice and stare at a blank page for like 10 minutes. See, I would feel like if I left my mic on so people could hear me typing, I would feel like my loud typing would bother them because I'm very specific about if I'm trying to do another task and someone is loudly typing or loudly doing tapping of any sort that I just get really annoyed by it. Like I have to have, um, I can't have distractions like that. I gotta have music going or something like white noise of some sort. So that's interesting to me. I realize that I'm not my audience for streaming. <laughs> I am such a weird audience. Or not weird, but just atypical. I have a bad habit of looking at people who are in Google Docs too. I'm like, are they reading it? Did they like it? What are they gonna say? Are they gonna leave a comment anytime soon so I can read it? And I just, I sit there and I like watch the cursor trying to figure out what people are gonna do. So yeah, I, <laughs> I get that too. It's funny. <laughs> Okay, what's left? What's left? I've done the outer gen- Ah, the flowers on the bottom. Oh, and, and the collar. I almost forgot the collar, you guys. Dare I forget the color? Okay, so the flowers, I think we're on the last element that I need to finish today. <laughs> Carmen arms. And these should go fast because these flowers aren't too. They're not as bad as Larkspur. Oh god. I never want to draw Larkspur again. These are just simple flowers with big, easy to draw blooms. I could totally dig that. With just enough of fun complexity with the star pattern without being too scary to draw. This 
little bud buds. Actually, I'm gonna make the lines of the stars white too. Or does that look weird? Mm, looks a little weird. Eh, no, we're not gonna do that. Because we love to color. Other random funny thing from the Nintendo, <coughs> excuse me, from the Nintendo conference, the Nintendo E3 thingy. It's so funny that they have a, a dude that works for them who's named Bowser. I'm just like, you probably have the qualifications for your job, but also the fact that your last name is Bowser is perfect like they that's too many marketing opportunities right there so you're hired oh steam stop tempting me into games i just want to turn steam off i always forget to turn it off before i stream after this I'm gonna go eat and have some tea and play the final DLC of Dragon Age Inquisition because when I talk to you guys next I'm gonna beat that dang game done it'll be done there'll be no more of it to play it can get off my soul Okay, you know what? Uh, checking for gaps. Oh, I missed a gap. Da, 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 da. Oh, I missed a whole couple of blooms over here. Dang it, I was about to say I'm done, but I'm not. Urgh, almost there. Urgh. And then I'm probably gonna stay up late and work on graphic design for the Kickstarter. <laughs> Artist life is fun. All right, let's zoom out for a minute and stare at this. Did I get all of the gaps? And did I color all of the lines? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yes, those are important. I think I got everything. Oh. oh, no, I didn't. Damn it. There's this one line I forgot. At least it's easy to fix. Boom. We are done. 
tried to do that pop thing that the fish from Nemo does, but it didn't quite work. Can't do it. Boom, we are done. So, huzzah! <laughs> Congratulations, everyone, we made it to the end. We have color flatted Lady of September. So the next stream will be on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I'll be working on shading her and finish doing all the painterly finishing touches and stuff. So thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And if you like what I do, definitely check out my stuff on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Angela Sasser. Pitch in a dollar and that will get you access to secret works in progress, sneak peeks, coloring pages, and all that jazz. And you can also subscribe to me here on Twitch. Everyone gets a free sub if they're an Amazon Prime member, so that also gives me a little kickback. And um, I'm out for now, so good luck with writing, Ray. And uh, I'll catch you later, Psyche. Don't know if you're still around, Sonny, but thanks for tuning in. You guys are awesome. I'll catch you later. Bye.